We will be touching base with the team inside the Ablekuma Central constituency. Is that where you live? Is that where you reside? Are you in the Russia area? Uh, share with us exactly what those concerns are. And um, what are the big issues in your constituency? Um, how often do you see your member of parliament, for instance? Uh, how are you able to engage with your leadership exactly what the issues there are in that constituency? Tell us exactly what that position is. Um, Kafri Day is there. Um, hopefully he might be zooming into a location very near you. But indeed, if you're watching as well, this this is GH Today and this is GH1 TV. Um, you want to probably be moving towards where the team is um, if you're watching and speak out. Let's hear your voices on the issue. So um, our hard talk conversations begins, um, I think now, really, with Kafwe Day um, on location inside the Ablekoma Central constituency. Um, hey, King Kaf. Hey, Queen B. Hey. Good morning once again. Um, Hi. Still in the constituency, no disappointments. Right. And uh, we will be speaking with those who live here as well as those who want to represent them. Um, I can see the MPP's parliamentary candidate for this mm. particular constituency, Ebenezer Nina Nate, who would like to take over from uh, Theophilus Tetechai, who is the current MP, but who for some reason or the other has not decided to go back to offer himself to the people. Mm. So it's a beautiful Wednesday morning. People are about their, their duties. We are actually at Zongo Junction right now. So if anybody's watching from us and would like to express themselves, please come over to Zongo Junction. We are at, uh, there are two only two total stations at this junction. We are, if you don't go see us in the first one, you'll see us in the second one. And, and, and so that's our conversation right here. And uh, well, the gentleman who is crossing my shot right now is the NDC's a parliamentary candidate for this particular constituency and i am sure mr nate is around i'd like to bring him in as well so but i'll start with first, uh, first of all with uh, Hal alaji halidu haruna salam alaikum well, like salam, uh, this time we are in your penalty box yes and you are safe right here no we are safe no problems yes. so tell me um, why do you want to be the parliamentary uh, uh, representative for the people of ablekuma central well, thank you very much. Uh, let me say good morning to your cherished voice and to those audience who are here. Indeed, I would like to represent my people because uh, as a child, whilst uh, growing up, they have protected me, provided me with security, provided me with shelter. And today, God being so gracious to me, I've been able to reach out to a certain stage where I needed to also serve their interests. And I have a passion that drives me, that is serving the interests of humanity. That is the reason why I want to represent. So service is the basic thing? Service is the basic thing. All right, we've been joined by the parliamentary candidate for the MPP, Ebenezer Nina Nate. Ebenezer, good morning. Good morning. Why do you want to be the parliamentary representative for the people of Ablekuma Central? Thank you very much. Let me say good morning to our chair viewers, and let me say good morning to my constituents um, and entire Ghanaians who are watching us this morning live on your show. Uh, I am Ebenezer Nina Nati, the MPP Parliamentary Candidate for Ablekuma Central Constituency. And I am coming in to serve the people in Ablekuma Central Constituency. I have lived in this constituency for so many years. I know the challenges and the problems in the constituency. And so therefore, I decided to offer myself to the people of the constituency to serve them in a way that will promote the well-being and the welfare of the constituents. And so therefore, as someone who have lived in the constituency, who still lives in the constituency, I believe that this is a time for me to offer my knowledge and experience that I've acquired to help the people of Ablukma Central constituency. Beyond merely living here, I mean, what else can you offer? Are you a leader? Uh, when we talk about leadership, I can tell you I'm a very great leader. The people in the constituency knows me and knows how I relate to them, knows how I'm always prepared to help them anytime they call on me. And I can tell you that whatever leadership skills I have gathered from my childhood, I'm bringing it to bear to help the people of Ablikma Central constituency. This is the second time you are running for this particular seat. Yeah. And I've, I've read a poll prediction which says that you're not likely to win this. How does that make you feel? I don't believe in polls. I believe on the grounds. That is a perception of people, but I disagree. The grounds who speak for itself. Just if you, if, you, if you check the analysis of this constituency, way back from 1992, where we started constitutional rule, 
check from the results, both presidential and parliamentary, and check when I was a candidate in the, for the MPP in 2012, the result that I got. And then the incumbent member of parliament, who was then the candidate for the NDC in 2008 and won the election, check the result between the two of us. We'll see the difference. And looking at the work that I have done so far, I can tell you, I'll win this election hands down. Alaji, what do you say about that? He believes that he will win. Um, the polls say you will win. Does that make you feel confident, uh, overconfident? Well, I have declared. <clears throat> and any time I meet the constituent, because certainly I needed not to be associated with the usual rhetorics of politics, where they will tell you that because you are in need, that is why you are actually coming and saying all the good things. I have already declared that my interest is to serve the interests of the people. And indeed, if there is anybody among the five of us who is much more compassionate than me, that can actually be able to sacrifice better than I will do. I have asked God to grant that person the opportunity. It's not about coming for personal interest. If wishes were horses, beggars would have right. I am saying that on the day of the election, I am not mobilizing anybody to do anything. And I want to believe and trust that my opponent will do the same. And indeed, if truly you want to save the people of, uh, the people of this constituency, you don't incite. You engage them. Let them appreciate what you have. Are you assuming that, are you telling me that he's inciting people? I am making a comment. I'm stating my position. And the point I want to make is that you have your cameras. Just drive along the Abusoka traffic light towards the mocks. You will see what they've done to my billboards. What have they done to your billboards? I just want you to go and look at it yourself. I have both sides of the street light having my, uh, uh, my, my images there. They've deliberately removed one side and placed their own there. It is there. You see it. I have reported this to the police. It's because my interest is to serve the people. I will not allow this to degenerate into any conflict or confusion. Can I get a comment on you on that? I'm you responsible for defacing his posters. Is that what you're doing now? <laughs> some, some, some of these, when you hear some of these things, you have to just love over it to release some stress. <laughs> I don't know where he's coming from. You can walk through the length and breadth of this constituency and you can see the number of billboards of mine that has been destroyed. Let me give you one example. And he's talking about you sending your cameras to um, the central mosque. Go to Abosokan right now. Go to the spare pass area. I always host my flags in the morning. I don't do things in the night. All my flags that I host in Abosokan has been removed when John Muhammad was coming here. They remove it and replace it. In fact, to extend that, mine, I use PVC pipe to use to do the flags. Remove mine, throw the flags away, and use my own PVC pipe and put the there. You can go to Abbasokan right now and go and see. So are these the main issues in this, in this constituency? I mean, flags, posters, <laughs> what are the big issues here? What are people, what are the issues that people want to be solved? Basically, in this constituency, people are talking about jobs. There are thousands of people, thousands of youth in this constituency who this morning are still living in their houses, expecting them to be at workplace. Nobody is helping them. We are living in this constituency whereby you live in some electoral areas. Anytime it gets rainy season, people are worried about it. Flooding areas. That is what people are looking but at. You're not, a, you're not a job center, so how are you going to help people get jobs uh, if you should become the, if somebody, the MP? If somebody tells you, that as a member of parliament, you cannot help your people to get job. Then I can say that that member of parliament, you are not capable of leading the people of the constituency. Because How are you going to do it? How are you going to do it, Thank Ebenezer? You Thank you very much. I have said to myself that given the mandate on the 7th of December, which I know with God on my side, I will. One of the things that I've decided to do is that I'm coming out with Ablukma Central Vocational Training Institute. This institute, we are bringing the young ones in this constituency who will train them in so, uh, dressmaking, will train them in carpentry. Who is funding this institute? As myself, through the Common Fund. What is the Common, common Fund meant for? The Common Fund is meant for the member of parliament to look at issues that that m amount of money can help them with. When we are able to put these things together, what we intend to do we liaise with institutions in this constituency, the schools here, the churches that have schools, and other 
institutions here, liaise with them. We have trained 50, 100 dressmakers. Where do you sew your school uniform for your school children? Oh, we sew it here. Fine. In this institution, we can sew it for you at this cost so that the youth in this constituency can get a job. So for you, jobs is not the main issue. Exactly. Elijah, what is the big issue here? I'm driving through here and, um, well, I want to hear what your issues are because I think there are other issues that we've discussed with people who live here. But what are the big issues in this constituency? <laughs> He's talking about jobs. Do you agree? Well, certainly it's one of the problems confronting the young ones within the constituency. It is not without doubt that certainly most young men are actually uh, sitting at home without jobs. But it's important to make the point that I have started and I can mention names of people I have helped in securing jobs. I have done that. And I can mention their names and they are available. They work at the various banks through my own initiative. So I'm saying I have started already even when I wasn't even a member of parliament, not even a candidate then. And so another issue that is comforting the people of this country is actually issues of education. There are many more of the young men and women in this country, in this constituency, who, because of probably a poverty level of their family, sometimes they have difficulties actually going beyond the basic level. My experience as a young child growing up from this constituency has actually taught me and strengthened me to appreciate the difficulties young ones are going through before acquiring education. Growing up as a Zongo boy, from like, to be a question, that's Tankasila, certainly, it, will, it takes determination, hard work, and support of individuals before I was able to make it to fancy people. For me to grow up in let there be a question of tankers life specifically to be able to ad get admission and infancy. It tells you the level of intelligence that one has. But significantly, you look at people or the children going to the basic school, from primary school to JSS. Most of them drops out from the basic school, that is the BEC level. Who is helping them to bring them up? You have situations where both parents certainly, like me, my parents were not educated. And assuming I wasn't able to make it at the basic level, I would have become a, a, a waste. So how are you going to help uh, people, current people who are like you back then? How are you going to help them as an MP? Well, first of all, I have started helping. I'm doing it already. Not that when I'm getting, when I am voted before I do it, I've started already because I have paid fees of many. Indeed, I recall one uh, who's asking me that this is an expensive job. You're going to spend your whole salary paying fees for people. Is that sustainable? Doing it genuinely comes with a benefit and grace from God Almighty. All right. Uh, we will speak to some of the people who are around here to find out what their issues are. But, but so if you have any questions for the parliamentary uh, candidates of the NDC and the MPP who are here with me, I'd love to hear them. Otherwise, I'll jump into the audience and then find out from the people exactly what the issues are. I can see that they are all gathering behind us. We'll be asking them pretty soon, questions pretty soon. But if you have any questions on our WhatsApp, please let me know. Quick questions. All right, I think um, I'll just go straight. I have two quick questions, Kafui. Ah, uh, Bishwa, go ahead. Yes, yes um, first of all, yes. I want to ask um, Alidu if he is indeed um, abusing incumbency to get the jobs for these people that he talks about, getting jobs in banks. Is he a banker? What kind of links? Uh, how is he able to put these people there in, in these jobs? And that is one. And secondly, all right, okay. Yeah, secondly, um, talk, I saw sanitation issues. Um, there were some pictures on screen as you were engaging them, um, gutters you know, uh, messy gutters and all of that. But Ali Do I know is a, a product of the Salvation Army School. And indeed, this school has serious sanitation issues. And I want to find out from both candidates how they're going to tackle the issue of sanitation, especially when it comes to the Okay, schools. sanitation. Yes. All right. What's the name of the school again so I can put it Salvation to, to, to them? Salvation Army Cluster of Schools and the Salvation Army School. Salvation Army Cluster of Schools. Yes. All right. Okay. So, gentlemen, so this is a question from my co-host in the studio. She says, look, there are serious sanitation issues in this constituency. And if you should become MP, what kind of clout would you bring to bear on the situation to bring down the situation of sanitation? I'll start with you first, Mr. Nate. One of the major problems, as your colleague rightly said, in this constituency is about Sunday. And it's cut across all the seven electoral areas. It's not specifically to salvation class or schools. But when you go to all the seven electoral areas, starting from Abosoka and ending at Latibia Koshin, that is where the salvation class of schools is. It has been a major problem. One thing I have said to myself, that as a member of parliament elected, liaise with the local... Hey, you've been voted already? 
Oh, you are calling yourself MP elect. Have you been vote, I can voted tell, for already? I can, I can tell you honestly, on the 7th of December, you call me and congratulate me. I can assure you for that. Liaise with the local government authorities. I don't want to discriminate, whether being an assemblyman, whether for the MPP, because it is not clear to us. Has the current MP failed? I will not say that he has failed. He has done his part. As a member of parliament, he has done his part. What he can do in this capacity, he has done it. But I believe strongly that me being a member of parliament come 2017, liaise with the assemblymen in the various electoral area and the unit committee, making sure that constant cleanup and general cleaning is going to be one of the things that we are going to work with. And honestly, we are not just going to distill the gutters and just leave the rubbish there, but making sure we we'll provide the bins at the various houses to make sure that some of these things are being cleared to the proper side. Honestly, if we leave these things just to go by, it will affect all of us. One of the challenges that we have in this constituency as well, we have open drains. And whenever it rains, you see people putting the rubbish into the drain. Not even when it rains. Right now, I was driving through. I, giving, went, I saw giving, people putting stuff in the gutters. It doesn't problems. have to rain. Yes, but I'm giving a major... Because one, at first, it is Zoom Lion who normally comes and pick up those things. I don't remember the last time. I, personally, I don't remember the last time I saw them moving around with their trucks, moving the strain. Because so people, have they abandoned you? I can tell. I can tell. And it's best known to Zoom Lion to come and tell us. Because people... But have you gone to them? You want to represent the people here. If Zoom Lion is not coming, have you gone to speak I to them? To, I have been to the, their office at uh, uh, Metro Mass, behind Metro Mass. I have been there on several occasions. In fact, there's a bin around my area. When it gets full, people put it on the floor. I have been there on the several... Big, better, big better container? Ones, yes. I have been there on several occasions. What I was told is that the one who is in charge normally don't come and pay at the office. So the people also refuse to come and pick it up. So you will be li you'll be liaising with the waste disposal people and the exactly. assembly to make sure that the sanitation exactly. issues are solved. Let me hear exactly. from Alaji Halidu. Listen, sanitation is massive here. Uh, smells, uh, rubbish, filth. Human beings should not be allowed to live in a situation like this. How will you sort issues like this out? Well, I thank you very much. I think that uh, it's important that we should be straightforward and honest about some of these issues. I recall debating him on the same station where when I indicated that 15,000 dustbins have been given out, he denied. He said it was a lie. You can go back and play your, 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 your recording. Today he's sitting here and saying that he has dustbins. So he's now confirming the position I've indicated. Now, what it means is that if you want to lead the people, you must understand the situations that the people are faced with. The, the fact that I have mentioned and made mention of Zoom Lion distributing, he vehemently discredited that position. You have to take the communication director of Zoom Lion to send the text through your your your, your host your host uh, your host uh, what is it phone to say that what he was saying was a lie. What, what are you saying? Is that correct? I'm saying what do you expect from the PR for Zoom Lion? What do you expect? He's a member of your party. What do you expect? I'm saying that let's finish with your program. You think waste disposal is now a political issue? <laughs> what, what what is not going on in this country? If you have time, let's finish with the show. I can take you to all the seven electoral areas and investigate it and play it for your listeners and your, your viewers to see. I'm not a hypocrite. I will not come and sit here and tell you things that are not relevant. I live in the constituency. I know what goes on in the constituency. When you call me, I told you I was in my house. I can take you to the length and breadth the seven corners of this electoral area and this constituency to see things for yourself. Wait. Well, surprisingly, this yeah, is a man we? who claimed to be living in this constituency, yet we started a job on a particular route called Wuwuti. On the day he was saying that I lied, that I promised I will be fixing that route. That day, for two weeks, contractors were working on it. And this is a gentleman claiming that... You what? Money. What? You're not faced with your money. Even street lights that are meant for assemblymen are given to you parliamentary candidates across the length of this country to be fixing it. I doubt if you can buy one street light and fix it. I have 20 street lights bought with my own money, have a receipt with that. How much is one street light? One street light is 200 Ghana cities. I bought it with my own money my own sweat's money to help the constituents. What you are distributing are given to you by the AME to be fixing. I mean, we are, we are do politics. We have information. Let me tell you, go to Okakwe North. Go and ask Razak, 
who is the parliamentary candidate of the NDC? Where did he get the street light from? Go to Okankwe South. Go and ask, go and ask Alex Akwaku, where did he get the street light from? Let me just pose that question to you before I get to those who are behind me. Uh, is AMA helping you to do your campaign? AMA, I have never gotten a street light from AMA. And let me also remind him that he doesn't even know what he's talking about. The photo cell itself is 40 cities. He is saying he's buying the 200. Photo cell for those lights is 40 cities. He should go back to the to 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 to, to 40 40 cities 400 Ghana. You are talking about 200 Ghana. Eh? 40. You don't even know the figures. 40 40 40 cities is 400 Ghana old old Ghana cities. I'm talking about old Ghana cities. And you are sitting here talking about two. now the point the point the point I want to emphasize here is that you see. You have asked about what I will do in resolving the issues of sanitation. It's attitudinal. For instance, leadership by example. You will not be leading people and be seen to be eating and dropping the, the, uh, the rubbish on the street. When you do that, you are actually even endorsing the conduct of uh, those who are always uh, throwing in things. What I will do certainly is that I would want to work on the conscience of the people. Let them appreciate the need to be clean. Because you have situations where weekend, Sundays, we all bath, put all the best of clothes, go to church. On Fridays, we put all the best of clothes, go to the monks. We wash down before even doing so. Why do we do that? We do that because we recognize that you must go before God Almighty with cleanness. So why are you allow allowing your immediate environment to be filthy? The point is that we will relate the, the fate of individuals within the constituency with the environmental issues so that at least they will appreciate the need to keep their environment. All right, you're watching GH Today on GH1 TV. We are live in the Ablekuma Central constituency. So if you live in Latibi or Koshi or Russia or name the areas for me. Zongo, Aigbe Town, uh, everywhere. You know, uh, seven lecture areas. Hello, sir. The light that I'm fixing, it costs 1,201. And how many have you bought? I have 100 pieces that I have given out. And each piece costs 1,200. You, you guys are rich, man. Go to work and go and check. I have put, I, I have put out... Uh, as, he doesn't know what he's talking about. I said photo cell. He doesn't know, even know what it means by saying photo cell. It's equalization of street lights here, you know. So let me find out from the people behind me what they think. Let me start with... With you, sir. What's, what's, please come forward. What's your name, sir? I'm Maxwell. 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 Uh, what are your the big issues here? Let's forget about the parliamentary candidates for now. What are your issues in Ablekuma Centre? The, already the uh, six member of parliament over here has done a lot. There's nothing else to talk about. Because the member of parliament, Madinis Kosu, that's the chai, has done a lot. If you watch uh, this thing, if you just through your eyes within this thing, Abosu Kain, that's another electoral area. He has done a lot, but most of the street, most of the street lights over there has been fixed. The road too has been what laid very nicely. If we watch, if you watch uh, this, currently we are even at this thing, uh, uh, kind now. That's Abusoka kind of electoral area, and the member of parliament, but that's you. He has done a lot. I don't want to talk too much. In, in, the one standing on the ticket of NDS, that's Honorable Ali Du Aruna, is capable to uh, to lead. After the MP is gone, are you, are you are you his uh, public relations man? No, no, no. But he's, he's capable to lead because yeah, yeah. he is he, he, also what into what to serve the people. He has done a lot in the okay. constituency. So All right. Let, 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 for let me speak to one of the gentlemen here. Yes, sir. Um, how long have you lived in this constituency, sir? I was born here, grew up here. Fantastic. Um, what are your issues in Abilokuma Central? We have a lot of issues that uh, we need someone who is competent enough to take us through those things. And then the best person for this job right now should be Ebenezer Nina Nati. You understand? Because if you look up to the issues of uh, one, starting from uh, unemployment on the system. Okay, so jobs? Yes, okay. jobs, and the sanitation. Sanitation. Um, we have so many youth. But listen, if he becomes MP, what can he do about the big gutter? I mean, really, MP can't do much there. Yeah, okay, if MP can't do much, then no MP can do roads, right? But do MPs do roads? How do MPs do that? I'm asking you the question, do MPs do roads? No, they don't do roads. Uh -huh. So that means so nobody can do something. No, you he, tell me, tell me what he can do. Me that question. Yes. That I, I have to. I didn't say he can't. I said that's a big gutter. How can he deal with it? I'm when the time reaches, no come and see. <laughs> when the time reaches, no come and see. Okay, uh, come in, sir. What do you mean by no gutter, no vote? I'm the PRO for no gutter, no vote campaign. Oh, no gutter, no vote yeah, campaign. Yeah. Tell me about that. What is that all about? We, we made that. We did that. I'll oh, hold it. Don't worry. Yeah. We did that uh, to let the government know that we have a problem there. And it was 2013 when we did that. 
we were hoping that the then uh, MP, the MP, the current MP. That's a child. Yes. He called us and told us they have even signed an agreement that January 2012, they will be coming to do it for us. Uh, 2012, they will come, they come and do it for us. Up to date, we have never seen them. And this, uh, the, uh, the aspiring candidate for MP, MP, NDC is one of uh, uh, the, the child's men that we work with. So what shows that he can do something for us? What gutter are you talking about here? The dress, the storm drain, a black man storm drain, okay. yes. Okay. He said, he's, you don't know a black man anymore. You don't know a black man central. A jumbo, I said a jumbo storm drain. So you don't need to add So, the, So you have a no gutter. No, no vote. vote campaign, yes. It's okay. ongoing. How many people are you in this campaign? We are about uh, 56 in all. Mm. Yeah, mm. and no, more, more people are coming now. Alaji, have you heard about this no gutter, no vote campaign? <laughs> I, I, I know the gentleman speaking, but it's important to mention that he claimed I was close to Tete Chai. I contested Tete in 2012. So you are not close to him? I contested Tete Chai in 2012. So I wonder the basis upon which he will be talking about closeness. However, it's an issue of responsibility. I am really, really in to resolve the problem. Ajambo had difficulties, no doubt about it. And I'm saying I personally visited Ajambo during the rainy season. I used my personal money to actually get a grader, a, 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 what is it, a payloader into that, that area. And I'm sure he knows. And then we, we actually distilled the path of the water just to mitigate the effect of flood. And that is an effort. And he, he lives there. The MPP candidate lives there. I, I left uh, Latabia Kwashin, went there, and then I paid for it. I have to actually get trucks to carry all the waste away. So the point is made clear that I am a problem solver. I don't create problem. And if he stands here and he's talking this way, certainly, it's quite unfortunate. But let me assure him that we have an engineering problem to do with the, uh, the main drains of the Kanishi Road. And we have secured a loan to the, the government of... When you say we have secured a loan, who is, who is we? The NDC. I'm speaking as an NDC member. And I'm saying that the NDC government has secured a loan to construct an interchange over the Obechebi Lamte. As part of the program, the Excellency has declared that the defect of the drain system around the condition will be addressed. And when that is addressed, what it means is that the problem of Ajembu will be resolved partially. And then we can then be talking about the proper drains that we need to fix. Let, let me get your response to this, uh, you and then you as well. Yeah. Uh, are you convinced by what he has told no, you? No, 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 not at all. I'm not convinced. He can't convince me one bit. Because the other time, Tete Chai said the same thing. He's repeating the same thing. And we know these people, they are liars. They promise and fail. The people of Ajoembu says enough is enough. We are going with Eben. Because Tete Chai told me that uh, MPP people know the contractor who has been awarded the contract to do that job. So they can't do anything. So now we are waiting for MPP. They, are, they know the contractor. We are waiting for them to come and control, come and continue the drain forest. They said it. I'm holding them by the way. And if Tete Chai is listening to me, he can challenge me if he didn't say that. I have evidence that he said it. Mr. Natek, let me hear from you on this as well. Uh, okay. Senator, any, any comments you can say? Um, in respect of the Ajembu drain, unless it doesn't live in the constituency, in 2006, the MPP secured a loan and a, a company was awarded. And the name of the company is Watertech. They started the project from the Central Gospel Church. Watch my camera. Yes. From the Central Gospel through the side. Then you pass through up to the old faith. And then what happened with the project? We lost power in 2008, and that is the end. In 2012, we have a place called Jotes Park. The NDC had a night rally, and a then and a current member of parliament, who was then the candidate, said that an award has been given, a contract has been signed, and so therefore in May 2013, after the election, they will start that project. In fact, recently, I had opportunity to meet with the AMA boss, Oko Van Apoe, at a funeral, and I'm quoting specifically, Randy Abbe's grandmother's funeral at Faith Cathedral. I was sitting right with him, and I asked him, Honorable, you came and you promised us in 2013 that the storm drains in Ajembu in May 2013, you are going to start because... And the situation now is that uh, it hasn't been done. Up to today, a grandma will say, Kabashi Mene, I'm just waiting, the so-called, Contract has been signed, and we've been hearing this since Adam. 
I don't know whether it can be changed now. It's but those that are concerned, I have conducted such a child on this thing after the election. We've been meeting on radio and on TV. I've asked him about those projects. I've asked Okono Vanapoy, who accompanied him to do that program. And up to today, nothing has been done. So we will follow this up and find out exactly what the status of. I need to wrap up this segment right now. I need to wrap up right now, Alaji. What do you want to say, Alaji? of the allegations of promise of the drains, etc. The MPP have been in power for eight years. Indeed, Ajembu remains as it is. And for eight years, what the accusation of diverting or because they love elect, uh, what is it? They, they, a project has been started. And then the project has started, they diverted the project to Alaju. So issue, the issue is that it's an outstanding project right now. Uh, we'll continue this conversation in a short while. Uh, this is live from Ablekuma Central. Lots of issues for us to follow up. I'm here with Alaji Halidu Haruna from the NDC and then Ebenezer Nina Nate from the MPP. We will be back shortly. Over to you. Beswa, it's getting hot here, but All I got to right, I can see that it's getting really hot where you are. I would have loved for um, your um, parliamentary candidates to have told us indeed um, who is responsible for waste disposal at some of these government schools in the constituency. But hopefully we can get some answers on that one and many others that are coming through on our social media platforms. It's GH Today.